XMP, enable it now to boost the performance of your computer and see a massive increase in FPS when playing your games. That's what everyone tells you, or there are a lot of videos and websites out there that say by enabling XMP, you will see an increase in FPS. But the question is, do you actually really see an increase in FPS? And also, how do you set up or enable XMP? Well, we will be taking a look at that in this video. So for those of you that don't know what XMP is, it's basically a setting within the BIOS that you can enable and it will change some of the settings for your memory. So the settings it will change is the timings and the voltage, and it can be easily done by the flick of one button. And then also when you do this, you can also increase the frequency of your RAM. So does this really make that much of a difference though? Let's go ahead first and take a look at the settings within the BIOS. So the first thing that you need to do is boot up into your BIOS. So to do this, you need to just simply restart your computer and then press the delete key on your keyboard, or it could even be F12 or F11, something like that. You might need to just go onto Google, type in your motherboard and just find out the key to enter into BIOS mode. Okay, so I'm now in my BIOS. I'm using a MSI B550. As you can see, there's a few different options we can choose from. So in the top left straightaway, you can see AXMP Profile 1. So this is the setting that we want to enable. So you can enable straightaway XMP Profile 1 by selecting that option there. Or another way of doing this, I'm going to show this method just because it's different for every motherboard. And the chances are you might not have that option along the top of new motherboard. So we're going to actually enter into the overclock setting. So now you can see there is an AXMP and it says disabled option. So we're going to simply select this by pressing enter on our keyboard. And we're then going to select profile 1. So you can see there, this is going to optimize the timing and voltage of the memory. So now that it says profile one, that means that I have the XMP selected. So for the first test, I'm just going to leave my DRAM frequency on auto. I'm now going to restart Windows and we're going to jump into a game and see just how well the game runs. As you can see there, my current speeds for my RAM is 2133. So go ahead and press escape on your keyboard and then make sure you do save the configuration. And also before you do this, I just wanna say, I can't take any responsibility if anything was to go wrong, um, because depending on how your system's set up and stuff like that, there's always that risk. Okay, so the user benchmark results are in. And at the top, you can see we've got the XMP disabled. So straight away, multi-core, it's in the green, it's on 77%, single calls on 72%, and then we got latency, which is saying it scored it at 39%. So at the bottom there, we've got XMP enabled, and you can see straight away from the bench, it's only on a 77.6%. So it's a slight increase from the 75.8%, on um, the top option with XMP disabled. You can see there the multi cores on 79%, single cores 75%, and then we got the latency on 40. So as you can see, enabling XMP hasn't made too much of a difference. However, it has made a difference. And that's what it's all about. It's trying to squeeze that extra bit of performance out of your hardware without having to go out and purchase brand new hardware. So the next thing we're going to do now is jump back into our BIOS settings and we're now going to change the memory to 3200 megahertz. As you can see on these two results, it was only set to 2133. Okay, so if you're in your BIOS and wanting to change the frequency of your memory as well, you need to go back to the overclock settings. So again, depending on what motherboard you have, will depend on whereabouts these settings are. They might be slightly different. So you should now, once you're on the overclock settings, see an option that says DRAM frequency or memory frequency or something like that. And you should then be able to see the frequency that your memory set to, or it should say auto. You need to then select this option 
and you will then see a list of different frequencies that you can use. So I'm going to select the 3200 option because that's the maximum that my memory can use. Once you've selected the frequency, go ahead and press enter and you then need to press escape again and then save the configuration. And again, like I said earlier on, if you do set the wrong setting, then you could end up making your computer not boot up. So just be careful when changing these settings. And the results are in. I have ran another test on user benchmark and you can see at the very bottom there, we got the XMP enabled running the memory at 3200 megahertz. And you can see that there is yet again another improvement. So the bench is on 108% now and it actually says outstanding. The multi-core is on 110%, single core on 102% and the latency is on 53%. So you can see there is actually a really decent improvement there with the memory enabling XMP and also changing the memory frequency. But what's actually made the difference as you can see on the results is just changing the frequency of the memory, which is expected. So it's now time to jump into a game and see how much of an increase we get in FPS. So the game that I thought we could test this in is Call of Duty Warzone. So straight away you can see we got XMP disabled and we've also got it enabled. And this isn't running at 3200 megahertz yet. So there's not really a great difference in the FPS here. While I was playing the game, if I'm being honest, I didn't really notice any difference. But although the difference wasn't noticeable, I'm sure it was still running slightly better. So the next thing we're going to test is obviously XMP enabled run in the memory with 3200 megahertz and I'm going to keep the other option with XMP disabled and then that one's running at 2133. Alrighty, so on the left we got XMP disabled and on the right we got XMP enabled run the memory at 3200. So with this test I did actually notice a very slight little difference in performance so it's not massive I didn't see the FPS go from 60, 70 all the way up to 100 like some of these YouTube videos and sites and stuff claim that could happen. This wasn't the case. So basically what I'm saying is don't expect massive results when enabling XMP and increasing the frequency of your memory. However, if you do do this, it does help as you can see on this test here. So the question is, is it really worth enabling XMP? Well, from the benchmarks, you could see that there isn't really much of a difference in performance. However, there was a slight bit of difference. So if you want to squeeze out that extra bit of performance for Windows and your games, then yes, enabling XMP is worth it and also increasing the frequency of your memory. But you're not going to, like I seen when playing Warzone, notice that much of a difference in your FPS. So these websites and videos that say, oh, you will see so much of a boost in FPS, you will not see that much of an increase. But they're not lying because you will see a slight increase. So that does now bring me to the end of this video. If you did enjoy this video, then click the like button below. And if you want to see more computer sluggish videos, then click the subscribe button. If you do subscribe, then I will see you in the next video.